Hallelujah. Welcome back again. Uh, we're experiencing um, system failure and then we have to start all over again. I want to welcome you to today's telecast once again. Uh, my name is Olushola Ademola. I'm welcoming you to the Reporters Ministry channel. This is God and you, uh, God in CCC, a telecast that is being aired every Tuesday between the hours of 4 p.m. GMT plus one to 5 p.m. GMT plus one. It's a wonderful thing to the glory of God to be before this camera, bringing you the word of God. This word is very rich, and I thank God for giving us this truth. Everything you're going to be hearing today is not because we are theologians or Bible scholars, okay, or Greek scholars, or Hebrew scholars. No. These things are simply what the Holy Spirit teaches. These are the things that the Holy Spirit has showed to me from the Bible. And I, I have come to believe what the Lord said to me from his word. And so there will be an explanation of what, even if we are going to have, or we are going to use the word Trinity, how it should be defined, even if we are going to use it at all. So Trinity, the question I'm asking today is, is it three in one or three of one? Should Trinity be defined as three in one, or it should be defined as three of one? Which, which does the Bible suggest? God is God, three distinct being, distinct personality, so they called in one person where the father is the principal, the first person of the Trinity, and the son being the second person of the Trinity, and the, the Holy Spirit being the third person of the Trinity. And the authority of the father is greater than that of the son, and the son is greater than that of the Holy Ghost. Is that what the Bible said? about God, about his word, which we call the Son, about God's spirit, which we call the Holy Ghost? Or is Trinity three of one person? One person, one being, if we can use the word for God, person or being, God is not a person. God is not a being, so to speak, but we are limited in using this word for God. And I hope that God will not mind that we say he is a being or he is a person. So, but truly God is not a person. The Bible clearly told us God is not a man. He's not a person. 
all right? So it's not a being, it's not, an, it's not a human being or angelic being or God is not a being, God is God. Is God. Indescribable. But in the way that he revealed himself to us, God said he's three of one. Not three, in one. But there is one God and there are three that are of him, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. It's a live telecast. We are still live, although we are out of, um, we are about several minutes behind timing, but it's still a live telecast. If you have your question, please ask it under the comment section, whether on Facebook or on YouTube, and they will be attended to before the end of the telecast by the grace of the Almighty God. Once again, my name is Olusha Ademola, and I'm welcoming you to today's telecast. Hallelujah and glory to God. Trinity, is it three of one or three in one? Three of one or three in one? Amen. Let's look at what the church is said. Um, it was described and uh, summarized with a picture. And then I'm going to show you what I have come to see that the Bible said about if at all we're going to be using the word Trinity for God. Okay, what it should, how it should be defined. What does the church say? The church said Trinity is equal to three in one. These three are the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. They are three distinct persons because the Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not the Father. The Father is not the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is not the Son. But the Father is God. The Son is God. And the Holy Spirit is God. Glory be to God forevermore. This is what the churches, what they said about Trinity. Hallelujah. Three in one. Three distinct, three unique persons in one. Now, what does the Bible say? This is what I saw in the Bible. I have also represented it and summarized it with a diagram for easy understanding. So what does the Bible say? about Trinity, if we're going to use the word at all, take note of that. I said that, <clears throat> excuse me, the Bible says Trinity equal to three of one. Three of one. Who is this one? One God. You can see God and the arrow goes right down to one. So there is one God. This God is Father, God is Son, God is Holy Spirit. Father is one with the Son. How? Because the Father, the Son, is the Word of the Father. So Father is one with the Son because the Son is the Word of the Father. Father is one with the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the breath, the wind, the ruach, the, 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 the spirit of the Father. All right? This is, these are the words that is used in the Bible. The Holy Spirit is one with the Father because the Holy Spirit is the breath of the Father or the wind of the Father. All right? So the Son is one with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus, the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of the Son. Amen. The Son and the Spirit, they are one together. So God is one, but he is of three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. And these three, they are one. Father, Son, and Spirit are one. Amen. You have the references there. I will look at those references probably in the 
uh, part two or part three of three in one or three of one because I have to show you these things in details. And you can do a study ahead of me to look at the evidences in the Bible. I've showed you a lot of scriptures, at least one scripture, one scriptural reference for every assertion, one scriptural reference. Glory to God. Now let me go to some scriptures and iron out some scriptures that looks to be confusing to people. Let's iron them out. I have about one, two, three, four, five, and six scriptures. Let's quickly look at them and iron them out. Number one, Ephesians chapter four and verse number six. Ephesians chapter four and verse number six. Ephesians 4, 6. Let's see what the Bible says. The Bible said, One God and Father of all, who, who is this who? The Father of all is the who that is above all. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all, and in you all. He's talking to the Ephesians church, Paul the Apostle, writing to them by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. He said there is one God and is the father of all. Father of all is above all. Is principal. Is primary. Foundational. Is the head of all things but the father is also through all and this is the word it is the word that is in that is through all things through all and he also said that the father is in you all and this is the spirit this is the spirit Every time we talk about in you all, in you all, Paul the Apostle was careful to let the people know that they are the temple of God. And the God that lives in them is called the Holy Ghost. He was careful of that to show people that they are the temple of the Most High God. First Corinthians chapter 3. He said they are the temple of the living God. Amen. And by the temple of God, he also said, do they not know that the Holy Ghost dwells in them? Praise God. Verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? Don't forget Ephesians 4, 6, all right? Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? So the efficient church, they understand what Paul the Apostle is saying, that the Father, one God, Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. When they read the Father is in you all, they understand that he's talking about the Spirit of God. Who is the Spirit of God? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And in verse 17, when we are back to 1 Corinthians 13, verse 17, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. So God actually dwells in us. And the name of that God or the description of the God that dwells in us is called the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. So you come to realize that God cannot be Three distinct beings in one person. This is three of one. So the Spirit of God and God, they are one. So the Father that is above all and in you all, the Father is still the Spirit. I'm just trying to marry Ephesians 4, 6 and 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17 together. Amen. John chapter, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 8. Now that I'm in Corinthians, let me just stay with Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 8 and verse number 6. First Corinthians chapter 8, verse number 6. But to us, 
who is who are the us the church with the believers but to us there is but one god there is but one god the father hmm. this god is the father the father means the principal the source that's the hebrew word for father and hebrew meaning of and greek meaning of father it means the principal the beginning the father is the beginning the father is the source everything are of him the father so when you look at when you hear about father father is not somebody who um had intercourse with a woman and then give back to something no father actually means source origin everything originated from god everything is from god everything is of god everything is by god that's the real meaning of father father is not about i have a wife because some muslim we say if jesus is the son of god and then who uh, who is the wife of god that god impregnated you know those kind of things are they are silly to say father means source but to us there is but one god the father of whom are all things you see that that's the meaning of father of whom the source of all things that's the meaning of father you know i will have just read this to you to save you a little time i didn't even know that this is the next thing i'm going to read i was just telling you father by inspiration of whom are all things you see that the source of everything and we in him we are in him and it can also be translated we are for him he said that you say in him of Verse 36. Praise God. Romans 11 and verse 36. For of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. Of him, for of him and through him and to him are all things. Let's start from verse 33 to find out who we are really referring to. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counselor? Or who had first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again. For of him and through him, and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. So look at the of him. That's Father. All right. I told you already from First Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6. Of him is Father, the Father of all, of whom are all things. All right. And through him, look at through him. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 8, who was through him ascribed to? Through him was ascribed to one Lord Jesus. Do you remember that? Through him was ascribed to one Lord. He said, by him, 
and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things. One Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things. Have you seen that? By whom are all things. One Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things. Romans chapter 11, verse 36. God, through him, we are true God. So this God is still the one Lord Jesus Christ. Very simple. Do you see that? Although I shouldn't say very simple, but very clear. Because these are the things that the Holy Spirit reveals. For the Spirit searches all things, yeah, are the deep things of God. And also to Him, the Bible says to God, in Romans 11, 36, to God. And we know that we are to Christ. We are to Christ. Colossians 1, 16. I will move to Colossians from there. All these things are just interpreting one another. Colossians 1.16. We have dealt with Father of, Father of all, of whom are all things, the Father, and to whom are all things, and through whom, and we have showed you from 1 Corinthians 8.6, the true is by Christ. Amen. Colossians 1 and verse 16. And now we want to look at the to whom again clearly. From Colossians 1.16. Colossians 1.16. For by him, speaking about Jesus, the Son, by him were all things created. By him, that's the still true him. By him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or principalities, or powers, all things were created by him and for him. They are created by him, that is through him, and for him. Look at Romans 9, Romans 11, 36. He said, for of him and through him and to him are all things. So who is the God that Paul was actually referring to in Romans 11, 33 to 36 is referring to the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus. captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. Who is this for whom to whom? God. Who is this God? Jesus. And Ephesians told us this father is above all, is through all, is in you all. Who is this God that is in you all? The Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God. So this is actually three of one and not three in one. Three of one, 
and not three in one. Glory to God. The same to whom, through whom, by whom was used for the Father, it was used for the Son, it was used for the Spirit. Amen. Verse 11. Hebrews 2, 11. For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one. He's talking about Father now. When you see off, it talks about source. They are all of one. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Amen. We all are of God. Hallelujah. And John 1, 1 to 11, 1 to 3. John Gospel, St. John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. And I'll be stopping here today by the will of God. And we'll continue from here by next week. We still have a long journey. Some steps more to take. John chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Trinitarians who believe that God is three in one, they said, yes, you see now, Word is one, God is one. But the Word of God clarifies in the next line, and the Word was God. That was God means word is equal to God. Although the Trinitarians does not argue whether the word is God or not, they are just saying that the word is different from the Father. And the Father is different from the Spirit. That's what they are saying. But we are showing here that the word that was with God means that the word was God. If the word was God and the word was with God, how can the word be different from the God? They said that this with God is Father. The Word was with the Father. And the Word is different from the Father. But the Bible says the Word is the Father. If you say God here is a reference to Father. Look at verse 2. The same was in the beginning with God. The same was in the beginning with God. But they said, look at it again now. Another with God. Another with God. So there are two, not one. But verse 3 now said, all things were made by the world. In the likeness of God, in the resemblance of God, pros, pros means similarity. They are similar. That's pros. Glory to God. They are the same. That's the meaning of pros. Pros God. The word was pros God. The word is the same nature with God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And by next week, by the grace of God, I'm going to be looking at other scriptures. Like Matthew 3, 16 to 17, the baptism of Jesus. They said, eh, don't you realize that during the baptism of Jesus, Jesus was standing, the Holy Ghost came upon him, and the Father spoke from heaven. If Jesus was the Father and was the Son and was the Spirit, or the Father was Christ and is the Spirit, how can Jesus be standing and the Holy Ghost will come upon him and then Father will speak again? We'll clarify that. And then they talk about the transfiguration. And that Jesus was standing, and then the Father spoke from the cloud. So that the one that spoke is not the Father. It's not the Jesus that was glorified. All right? And they also spoke about uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 24 to 28. And then uh, Matthew 27, when Jesus Christ said, Eloi, Eloi, la sabachthani. Who was he praying to? And et cetera, and et cetera. All these things will clarify by next week. Trinity in CCC. How should Trinity be defined if ever we are going to be using this word? Is it three in one or three of one? What does the Bible say about God? May the peace and the understanding of God be with you and rest upon you in the name of Jesus. Join us again by next week as we continue on this same subject. The Lord be with you in Jesus' name. Amen.